This video is all about sex determination, linked genes and sex linkage, three topics that we found at the end of the chapter on genetic crosses. Sex determination. What exactly is the difference between human males and human females? Who is it that determines the sex? Who's responsible for passing on the sex of the child, if you like, in males and females? And what are the chances, if a couple is to reproduce, of them having a baby boy or a baby girl? We have 23 pairs of chromosomes in the nucleus of our cells. The 23rd pair is known as the sex chromosomes. In males, they have an X chromosome and a much shorter Y chromosome, and this is responsible for maleness. In contrast, females have two X chromosomes, and that's the reason why they are female. So what are the chances of a couple producing a baby boy or a baby girl and who is it that determines the sex? Well, the first thing to do is whenever you're going to reproduce, you have to produce gametes. So the female can give one X chromosome into one gamete and the other X into another gamete. And the male can he can either give an X chromosome or a Y chromosome into a sperm. So basically, here you have the gametes. Now you do a genetic cross and you can do this using a Punnett square. So here is the Punnett square with the female gametes along the top and the male gametes along the side. Usually you don't draw diagrams of eggs and sperm. I just did it to help you understand. So in your exam, just put in the letters. So you're going to combine each of the two gametes on the top with each of the two gametes at the side. So the first offspring or the first child is going to be XX. So that's going to be female. The next one is going to be XX. So that's another female. Then you're going to have the X and the Y, that's a male. And then you have another X and a Y, that's another male. So you can see from this Punnett square that there is a 50-50 chance of having a male or a female offspring. And basically it's the male that determines the sex because he's the one that gives the Y chromosome, the different chromosome. In other organisms, it's the opposite. It's the female that determines the sex. So the situation is reversed. If, for example, in birds, butterflies, moths, some fish and reptiles, it's the female that determines the sex. Sex linkage is when the gene that controls a particular trait or condition is found on the sex chromosomes, the X chromosomes in particular. Two examples of sex linked conditions or traits are haemophilia and red and green colour blindness. So as sex linkage comes up a lot, let's do a previous question. So this is an example of a previous question. So let's see if we could do it. So haemophilia in humans is governed by a sex linked allele. So as soon as you see sex linked allele, you know you're going to have to write XX for a female and XY for a male. So that's the first thing. The allele for normal blood clotting is dominant to the allele for haemophilia. So we're going to use the dominant letter. So we're going to use a big N for normal and a little n for haemophilia. So that's our allele sorted. So question one says determine the genotypes. So the genetic makeup, the alleles and the phenotypes, the physical makeup, what they physically look like of the progeny of the children of the following cross. So we're going to have a haemophiliac male XY and a heterozygous normal female. So a female XX and she's heterozygous. So she has two different alleles, the normal and the haemophilia. The easiest way to do this is to use a Punnett square. And you know that you put the gametes along the top from one parent and the gametes along the side from the other parent. So it doesn't matter which you put on the top or the side, but I've just put the male gametes along the top for today. So the male is XY. Remember, it's a sex linked condition. So you have to always write down the sex chromosomes first. And the sex linked condition is linked to the X chromosome. So this person has haemophilia. This male has haemophilia and it's a recessive condition. So he has a small N and it's always written as sort of superscript above, high above the X. So along the side, you have the female, the mother. She doesn't have haemophilia, but she's heterozygous. So she's female, so she's XX. She's heterozygous, so she has two different alleles. She has the big N, the dominant allele, and she's the small N, the recessive allele. And now we're going to cross the male and the female gametes. So this is the result of the cross. So the question asked you to give the genotypes of all of the offspring. So the genotypes are all in red and that's what you would write. So let's go through the phenotypes, the physical makeup of each of these offspring. So the first offspring is a female because it's XX. The female is heterozygous, so it has a big N and a little n, and so is normal, does not have haemophilia. The next offspring is XY, so that's a male. And this male has normal blood clotting factor, so it doesn't have haemophilia because it does have that small n. 
The next offspring is XX, so that's a female, and this female has the two small recessive alleles, the two small ends, so this female has haemophilia. And the final offspring is XY, and this is a male, and this male does have that one small N on the X chromosome, so this male has haemophilia. So the final topic is linkage, sometimes referred to as genes being linked. So this is two pairs of chromosomes and you can see there's a gene for S and there's a gene for Y on each pair and there's different alleys on the separate chromosomes. So there's two big S's and there's a big Y and there's a little Y. So if this organism wanted to give or to make gametes, it could have either one of those S's with either one of those Y's. Mendel's law of independent assortment, his second law. So now if you look at this diagram, this time we've got one pair of chromosomes and the S's and the Y's, so those two genes are on the same chromosomes, but some of the alleles are linked. So the capital S, the dominant S, is linked. It's on the same chromosome as the recessive Y. And the recessive S is linked to the dominant allele for Y. So basically, if this organism with this genotype was to produce gametes, the dominant S would have to go with the small y. They're linked together and the same for the other one. So let's give a summary of linked genes. Linked genes are on the same chromosome. So basically Mendel's second law, the law of independent assortment, does not apply. This results in ultimately less variation in the phenotypes because you're going to get a ratio of 1 is to 1 phenotypes if a heterozygous parent is crossed with a recessive parent that's homozygous and the genes are linked. Whereas if they're not linked, the same cross would produce a phenotype ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So to sum up, make sure you can define linkage. You know that Mendel's second law will not apply and that ratio does not apply. Know what sex linkage is and give examples of sex linked traits so be able to define it and know what sex determination is and how you can do a cross to prove it. So remember, these videos are not made for monetary gain nor are they intended for commercial use. Always use your textbook. Best of luck.